Hello, everybody, and welcome to... I shouldn't have done that. I, I probably scared some people away there. But welcome to the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today is the first day of a very special couple of days where I got to talk with Matthew Buckley Smith of Slee Ricketts fame, you know, the big damn poetry social media influencer. Yes, that Matthew Buckley Smith. And we, um, on this fun, wild ride, we talk about all sorts of shit. And here is a list. We talk about academia and what I get wrong about it. We talk about weird debates with editors. We talk about should writers even ask editors questions. We talk about cover letters, what places you should submit to, how to teach poetry, how to win poetry prizes. And then we actually start talking about author photos and his book, Dirge, for an imaginary world. And we talk about what it's like to not feel connected to your poetry. We talk about poetry podcasts like his show Slee Ricketts. And finally, on this first bit of this, we talk about poets being fucking precious and clutching their goddamn pearls. Yeah, so Matthew Buckley Smith, the influencer, pulls no punches and he goes right for the jugular against all of the poets out there. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. Oh my God. Yeah, so good times, good times. And it, let me go ahead and give some of the um, Anarchy crew and other shout outs. So over at Patreon, I wanna give a thank you to Michael, to Deborah, to Cedar, to Harry. And then as for the crew, I want to thank Alan, Patrick, and AM back in the goddamn motherfucking fold. That's what I'm talking about right there. And then the big swinging dicks of the motherfucking anarchy crew. Give a thank you to Bunny, Nate, Mindy, Thomas, Tim, Lisa, Josh, and our newest anarchist, Jessica. Thank you so much for your support. All the shit that you guys do for me, I hope I do cool shit for you in return. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And now, let's go here from Bucks himself. Because um, this is the uh, too cool for school fucking show over here. That's right. Um, since... We had already discussed what we were going to talk about mm -hmm. about 15 minutes ago. I decided to give you different stuff. Ooh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, game. <laughs> I'm game. I do that to Brian all the time. He's like, please don't talk about this because I'm not ready. To, I need to reread it. I don't have time. And he'll be like, sure, except I really want to talk about that book. <laughs> so fucking good, dude. Yep. So one of the things that we go back and forth on when we do mm -hmm. chat is me with this notion that you are of academia and how you <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. what is it exactly that i get wrong about that world that's kind of oh. huge but like yeah 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 you could start like just making me feel like go yeah you know what it's not really like this you don't need to feel yeah, like yeah it's not really like this well i don't feel inclined to defend academia. I mean, I, I, I started my own podcast with, with no small amount of hostility toward it. I think the thing I hear from you is a, is a sort of an odd conflict. I mean, first of all, like I'm not part of it. I'm not, you know, like I, I, I've spent plenty of time in school, but like, I'm not at a university, so it's not, it's not part of my life. Uh, but I, I mean, I think, I think what I, I hear you talk about academia as if the people who rule academia are currently the new critics like are currently and even like a, a kind of a cartoon version of the new critics who just only want to like wrap everybody's knuckles and make them write sonnets 
when like that's so far from what oh. creative writing teachers in colleges are doing. I mean, in a way, I sort of wish there were a little bit more of that. Like I wish people at least if you're going to go get an MFA, which I don't necessarily recommend. I mean, I definitely like I, I have lots of qualms about that. But if you're going to get one in poetry, you know, I think it probably would be great if you learned how to write and meter and rhyme just so that's something you can do, right? I mean, you're getting an MFA. It's like if you go to get an MFA in uh, Might as drawing, well. you're going to do fucking life drawing. You're going to learn how to draw apples. You're going to do the things that you do, and then you can choose later whether you want to do them more or not. So oh. I would love for there to be a little more of that. It's not really there. It's not. I mean, I went to an unusual MFA program, which was even, even the little bit of instruction and form that we got was quite unusual. So I, I'm, I don't at all mind your hostility toward academia. I just sometimes feel like you're like Michael Robbins had this great essay a number of years ago in poetry about uh, a postmodern American poetry anthology and his, and his sort of thesis was the whole, everybody in this fucking anthology thinks they're a rebel. They all think they're fighting the man. And he's like, they're all fucking tenured. They are the man. Like they all, they all love the idea of this boogeyman who's telling them. Like, there's a I don't know if you remember in um, uh, Dead Poet Society when Robin Williams gets replaced. He gets replaced at the end by this like totally cartoonish, uh, school marmish professor who who may like literally gets out like <laughs> like like ruler and protractor and and like they have to, have to like measure the numerical value of the poem's quality and it's like this is insane. Like that's an insane. Yeah. Nobody has ever done that. But also, like, all of the people who currently have tenure in creative writing programs <clears throat> wish, like, they love that idea of the institution because then they can feel like they're fighting something. The reality is, like, people who write in meter and rhyme, for the most part, are fucking weirdos on a radosphere who aren't employed anywhere. I mean, aren't employed at universities, I, I think say. what it sounds like, and I'm, I'm going to explain it like this because this Please, is how yeah. it works. When I was doing more film stuff mm -hmm. yeah. and I would um, hit up like different production companies and shit like that, the smaller production companies would fucking give me so much shit and just say things like, you know, like, do you understand like how valuable our fucking time is and all this other <laughs> shit? And they would just like run their mouth at me and shit. But then if I would call like American Zotrope or whatever, like Copeless right. Company, yeah. like they were fucking nice as shit to me <laughs> and would treat me so fucking good because again, like they never know like who their fucking next boss is going to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, And they don't have to prove anything. Exactly. They're, not, they're not insecure. They're not worried. And so I think the problem I have is mm -hmm. that a lot of the um, poetry editors who have mm. tried to have conversations with me based off of the things I've submitted have become this whole fucking thing about rhyme and meter and how I'm uneducated and how if you're not like this, you can't be this and all this other shit. But those are people who are probably outside of academia, but claiming academia. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm... I'm sort of amazed that you're hearing back from editors, like just because I, I mean, I, I nine, I mean, not nine times out of 10, like 90, mm -hmm. 90 times. I mean, like I, so, so much the norm is just flat rejection or like maybe stamped tiered, you know, tiered rejection, this thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like the, that's almost all I ever get. And on the very rare occasion that I get something accepted, I mean, I will sometimes get like I had a guy uh, ask me if I minded making a a one word plural title singular so as to avoid kind of, like associations with Sinatra. It was called regrets, and he said, "Well, what about just regret?" And I said, "Like, fine, that's fine, cool." But like, I, I don't, I, I just like, I, I don't even like the, the, the editing work I do. I don't. Um, I can't believe they're fucking doing that. Like, it just seems crazy. Like, who are these people who are writing you these elaborate notes about your poems? Here's how it goes. When I do my cover letters, yeah. I do my cover letter. And, like, I don't recommend everyone do this, but it's right. like, dear sirs, go fuck yourself. Here are my no, poems. No, 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 not even like that. Like, <laughs> if I'm going to submit somewhere, I will usually look into at least the editor who I'm sending the stuff to. Yeah. And in my cover letter, 
I will ask a question based off of something that I've learned about this person to open a kind of dialogue. And I don't recommend people do that because people don't have fucking time to respond to every fucking email in the world. But when you play up to vanity, a lot yeah, of times yeah, yeah. you get a response. So when I would get a response, it would open up a conversation and then this is how all this shit would happen. So I, I would love, I would just love to hear like what, what wisdom they tried to impart to you or what like recommendations they made and how the hell meter and rhyme came up. Cause I'm so like, so few poets have in, almost any time I see a fucking essay about meter and rhyme, unless it appears in a formal magazine, um, almost always those people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. The conference I just went to, I listened to, I got yelled at by a room full of Miltonists because they didn't know how to fucking scan. Like almost no one knows how to scan. So I'm just amazed that like, that's a thing people went to at all. When usually if you write a meter and rhyme, you'll get like, scan, like look at a line and say what the meter of it is. Oh, okay, okay, um, okay. Yeah, like I find like, as I like met a guy at this conference who I was like, don't, don't you find that, that very few people actually know how to scan? And he said, no, I find that no one knows how to scan. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm just so well, curious about like who are these people and what are they saying? This um I get well one example is the magazine itself said it takes all kinds of stuff, you know, but always we, a lie. Always a yeah, lie. Totally. <laughs> yeah. But we do prefer um formal poetry or whatever. Oh, see, this isn't poetry, this is journaling. So um, but if you want to, since you're local, we can go get coffee. And then maybe I could like talk to you about my poetry workshop. And then maybe you could enroll in my poetry workshop and I could teach you how to write. Although there are some places that take what you do. We're just not one of those places. And then he like sent me like three copies of the magazine to like look through. And I'm like, I'm never fucking going to see this motherfucker. <laughs> like, are you fucking with me right now, dude? But no, I mean, like, it's just like. Like, did he ever have friends? Like that's just no, such a crazy these thing to do. Fucking have friends, dude. Oh, but anyway. So when I go through submittable, I feel like it's very cold, but it is very like I like it because it's so quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when you like are digging around for like local places and then sending stuff. Um, out to them and i could go through my emails and try to find stuff that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i could show you but it's just like when you open a conversation and i know you're not supposed to do that <laughs> but when you open a conversation and try to like fuck around with somebody a little bit you get a lot out of it and well in my case i ended up getting a lot of anger out of it but in other ways it's worked really well you know like yeah. I, I think that's a totally fine thing to do i mean i yeah I, as an editor do you find that not insulting but annoying that you have to now respond to a random question that really has nothing to do with the submission I, I don't know i mean i think i think like he he always has the ability not to answer right i mean that's that's always fair i think like i i, I don't i don't know it's true because like they, i do occasionally get caught up in sort of long exchanges with people. Usually it's just somebody who's writing me about something that I can't control and they keep asking me about it. I'm like, I still fucking can't do this, man. Uh, like, I try not to ever respond to rejections. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, like, that's good. That's Don't respond try, to rejections, yeah. That's why I try to hide a bunch of shit in my cover letters. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like but, um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I also try, like when I get submissions, I try not to read the cover letters. I try not to read the bio. I try to just start with the poems. Um, and then... Here's the thing. Here's the thing about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everyone says that that's what they do. So yeah. why the fuck is it so important to do the bio and the cover letter? It's not. I, I would... I mean, this is why I didn't do that. I, I think I said the other day, like, I used to do just a bare minimum, like, these are the names of my poems. Thank you for considering them. And I was told that uh, that everybody that like it ma makes a difference if you if you list your previous publications. And so then I started yeah. doing that. I don't know if it's helped or not. Really, I'm not sure. Do you think uh, listing your previous publications means that the person reading it won't even really look at your poem as much as where you've been published? No, I mean I think the trick is uh, unless your name is such that like when they see you've submitted, they know they're going to take something regardless. Yeah. 
unless that's the case, I think all it is is you're you're hoping that they will actually read your poems. Because I think most of the time editors don't. They take a glance, they they maybe pass their eyes over it. Uh, but I think I think the, the key is that like having a good cover letter is not going to get you published, but it might get you not rejected out of hand. Yeah. Okay, that, that's solid. That's solid. Do you look at when you submit to places, do you only submit to places that you know are like been around for a long time and are legit? Oh, not necessarily been around for a long time. I mean, I these days I just don't submit that much anymore. And I, I am doing some well, yeah, all right. So just stick to sticking to poetry for a moment. I tend to submit to places that request poems from me or places that I this sucks so much. This is like, I'm going to admit something just so shitty, but like, here is the honest to God truth. I'm submitting to other than like, if you request a, a poem or like it's, I have a personal relationship or something. I, I, I am submitting to magazines where I think there is a chance that the various uh, anthologies or like poetry daily or American life and poetry. I, I think that, you know, I'm submitting to places where I think there's a chance they will see it because the thing is those anthologies, they don't read most of the teeny tiny magazines. They only read magazines that have a certain level of prestige or above. That sucks so much, but that's the tr because I think like I figure when you send out a poem to a magazine, even if it gets published, in most cases, even with a respectable magazine that like pays decently, I mean never it's never decently, but like decently for poetry, nobody's gonna fucking read it. Like I think like almost the only way to get it read is to have it selected for some one of these because like people do read poetry daily people do read best american poetry people do read american life and poetry like so there's th i think that's honestly what i'm shooting for so do you think poetry like poetry chicago poetry foundation do you think they're like no one's looking at that oh poetry magazine yeah no they're huge okay like like they they were they are they have fucked the dog so many times over the last 10 15 years but they have they have such a reputation and I mean, and the thing is they just have so much money that like, that's not going to change anytime soon. Yeah. I've definitely never Who received even them? an encouraging note from them. I've only ever gotten form rejections. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I haven't submitted to them in a long time, but yeah. Do you know who owns them? Well, they're a nonprofit, but they, they got their money from the Lily family, which is to say from, <laughs> from the devil. I mean, not the devil, but like the, a giant pharmaceutical company. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. That, that's good. To know. Okay. So back to um, the academia. The thing that cracks me up so much, whenever I see the word academia, I say in my head yeah. academia because. Like I macadamia nut. Exactly. Because I think they're nuts. Yep. No, me too. And that's I, what I, and I used to say that. And then I got, I got broken of that habit because so many people said academia that I, I like, I said, all right, I guess it's, it's academia. It's so hard. Yeah. Um, you've said on your show that um, you think one of the biggest problems with poetry is how it's being taught. Yep. Right. And you do teach poetry. Like sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. So what yeah. do you do differently that you wish places would do? I think memorization is great. I think it's great to memorize poems. I think it's a great way to learn how the poem works and, and why the poet made the choices he made. Not because you're reading his mind, but because when you memorize it, you have to think about what word comes next and maybe why it comes next. So what you learn what every word is doing by memorizing. So I think memorizing is super out of fashion and super, super helpful. I also try to... I work from sort of the premise that... When we talk about poetry, for the most part today, you know, if you're teach, teaching a literature class, obviously poetry is a big category that that includes epics and dramas and so forth. But if you're talking about poetry the way we talk about it today, what you're what you're really talking about is sort of the tradition of the lyric. Mm -hmm. And I think the very simple function of the lyric, which I think most people are weirdly baffled by, is that it, it's not there just to sort of light a fire in your brain and let you ponder things. It's there to cause you to feel an emotion. Yeah. And so if you're writing a poem and it causes your reader to feel emo an emotion, then you did something like your job. And yeah. if it doesn't, as like my old, very crusty, very academic professor who was, uh, you know, couldn't have been drier back in the day, what he used to say was, no feeling, no poem. 
Yeah. I think he's right. I think he's totally right. So I think like just starting with that, like here's what poems do. I for for years I've been Ryan and I've been my um, old friend and uh, a collaborator in a lot of cases. Uh, who also, I think we gave each other COVID apparently this past weekend. Um, but he and I have been like tentatively planning to write a, po a book called What Poems Do. Because I think like so often people are just interested in like, like the, I think the um, Archibald McLeish, a poem should not mean but be bullshit. I think it's terrible. Uh, like poems do things. And that, and like, then if you were reading them in order to say, well, what does this do? And then how does it do it? Those are questions that you can you can talk about that have like real answers and they're not, the answer is not, did you solve the riddle of this poem? Because that sucks. And I think it's something I hated doing as a kid. That's how most people teach poetry. Right. Well, and, and in fairness to most people, I think, cause I certainly did some of this early on. I think that uh, the way it often happens is that if you are a certain kind of nerd, then you might get excited in a class when a yeah. teacher shows you some like secret thing in a poem that you yeah. didn't think. And like, you're like, whoa, that's so fucking cool. And then you sort of stumble your way into doing that in class where you think like, well, well, look at, look, see, look, see, do you see what this is doing? Do, do you, do you, cause you're trying to replicate that same excitement you felt when somebody blew your mind. But like yeah. for most people, that's just really intimidating and alienating. And and it doesn't really help you learn much about the poem. It's just a fun Easter egg. And like, if you're a nerd and you love Easter eggs, great, but you can't teach poetry by teaching Easter eggs. Yeah. That'd be my, that's my yeah, spiel. That's a t-shirt right there, dude. That's <laughs> I like that a lot. So I got the book. Yep. Thank uh, you. Oh man. Post-its. Yeah. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Trouble ahead. I'm pretty <laughs> 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 okay. So, um, Dirge for an Imaginary World. Tell me a little bit about why this is called this and why the book's laid out the way it is. Oh, uh, all right. So the Dirge for an Imaginary World was the title of a poem I wrote. And then I revised it and revised it and revised it and revised it and revised it until there was literally nothing left but the title. And then I figured I still kind of liked the title, so I would just put it on the book. <laughs> so that's where that comes from. Uh, I mean, the, you know, it, it like oh. the... A lot of the book, a lot of the poems in the book are sort of about a, a disillusionment, like losing my faith in God and, and, and like kind of confronting mortality and those kind of boring old tropes. So th that's sort of what the, that, that poem and, and that title were getting at. My, I have a very uh, unfashionable and sort of shitty theory of poem, of like poem ordering in books which is, by the way, like you want to, you want, you want to hear like the kind of awesome wisdom you learn in an MFA program. I was told, here's, here's what I was told. <laughs> you put your second best poem first, your third best poem second, and your best poem last. Ta-da. So, uh, which is like not terrible advice, but also like I do, and I do flip to the end of the book anytime I pick up a book of poetry before I buy it. Um, because but, do you assume that the best poem is going to be the last poem in the book? I think if you, I think the last one should ha should pack a punch, okay. Because um, you're gonna you're sending us off, right? You know, yeah. you leave us wanting more. Uh, so, I have certain obsessions that I come back to, but I totally am of the opinion that that the the basic unit, like the survival unit of poetry, is the poem. Not the collection. I think collections are totally ephemeral. I think, like, with very, very few exceptions, they they basically like uh, uh, dissolve on impact, and all that's left is like a handful of these little one poems that you, somebody pins up on the wall, or passes on to a friend, or gets some line tattooed, or whatever. Like, it's the individual poems, and sometimes just the individual lines that survive. And so, what I do in ordering a collection, and <laughs> I have another collection that's been coming out for like a year now. <laughs> So it's sometime it will, it will come out, I promise. Uh, I'm very slow, as, as you are not. But my whole my whole rule is just put it in an order that doesn't, like, irritate the reader. Like, I, I don't think themes or projects are very, like, I don't care about any of that. I don't have those. I just try to write a bunch of individually good poems, and then I try to put them in an order where you don't, it's not like toothpaste and orange juice. Like, you don't go like, whoa, why did that one come after that? Like... Uh, so that's all I'm really doing. So with the three sections in the book, because like you have youth, like before the little, first little per first one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first section is about like losing your faith or your relationship with God, 
And then the second one I think is about um, school. And then the third one is about adulthood. Is, did, am I getting Yeah, that? that seems that seems roughly right and sort of like, yeah, they're kind of grouped by in, in those yeah, general modes. So that was a purposeful, like I'm going to do this like this. Yeah, but I just, I guess I just don't think it matters. Like, I just don't but think like, yeah, putting, like that was roughly what I was doing. But I also like, like what also happened while I was like in the very end of finishing the book is that the the, the publisher wrote me and he said, uh, we need three more poems because the book, the spine is so narrow that we can't put type on it yet. So we need like more physical pages in here. So I like, I also just like sent him some poems there. So I think like the, 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 I just think like the, the selection and the ordering is not, is not super important. Okay, well then let me ask you this since we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> um, let's talk about this. Okay. This glamorous business. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to guess this was a wedding day picture. Totally. Okay. Yep. And um, the perspiring forehead napkin yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, was because of like nerves or it was just hotter than shit and it's hot as fuck and it, it was the the room yeah. the the men had to change in was just a like a oven there was no air conditioning and yeah so is there any symbolism in the fact that you're all dressed up sweating <laughs> as your author picture for the book I, not that i know of i don't know <laughs> like fucking man, i don't know like people definitely gave me lots of grief for that picture and like in some ways it was memorable or people responded to it. I mean, that was like, I sent the editor a few things. I just don't like, I don't have people. If you're, if you're an adult man, like people don't take photos of you individually very often. And so as you know, so like, I just didn't have that many options. I sent, I sent them to the editor and he was like, Ooh, this one. I'm like, well, all right. Okay. If you're an adult man and don't hang out at Sears, no one's taking. <laughs> right. yeah. Especially if you live in a house with like two small, cute girls and then like, yeah. you know, your furniture. Okay, um, so then the other question I would ask, um, because it's such a good story, I'm assuming the semen poem in this book <laughs> is the come poem from the story, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Can you give a little bit of that? Because that <laughs> sure, was just sure. fucking brilliant. Yeah, I. <laughs> so I went to a um, a couple of poetry conferences in the. Um, after the book came out and one of them, my, my wife and I actually have both had our first poetry collections come out the same spring, coincidentally. Uh, and at one of them, I met the guy who had selected the book. It was a book contest. Uh, this book contest in particular, which I read for this past year, uh, you, that you have a bunch of no name readers winnow the books down and then you get like 10 final finalists. And then those go to the, the brand name poet who picks the winner. And so the guy who picked it my year was at this conference and he liked to have a good time, liked to have some drinks. And he, uh, he, he, he grabbed me by the shoulders and he, I think like he thought he was telling me like a, like a fun story, but he was like, oh man, I was reading those manuscripts and they were so fucking boring. But then I got to this one. And I thought a poem about semen. I've never read a poem about semen before. This is great. So I figured that has to be the winner. Like, cool so you read one poem in my book it had semen in it you thought that was cool you gave me the prize i mean and in fairness like i think it's a pretty fucking good book but i also think that whether you win a prize or not is a fucking coin toss like i just think it has so little to do with quality like, quality is like perpendicular to it like yeah. it's it can matter it can come up and like plenty of people who win prizes do deserve to win like it is good work but it's that's not why they won in almost all cases. So that's how this book got published. Yep. Right. Now, is the new book that's coming out with the same company? No. That one won a different book prize. Uh, and, so two yeah. semen poems. Two semen, yeah, semen poem part two. Yeah, that was, I, that, I, I learned the trick. I got to reel them in. This is <laughs> just throwing ropes. Yeah. So you were we were talking about it and you were saying that you don't feel very connected to these poems anymore. Can you elaborate on that and like what you mean by that? I write sl pretty slowly and I publish, I try to publish slowly. I try to sit on things and let them cool down before I send them out. And I 
I do revision. I, I don't do as much revision as some people might because I, I tend to do more culling. Like I just throw away the overwhelming majority of what I write and then a handful of things sort of stick out and I, I work with them over time. Mm -hmm. Once I've really finished a poem and then I found it a home of some kind or another and like the final home that matters to me is sort of the poetry collection because like may, maybe at some point I'll do a selected which I can't really imagine that happening but like maybe I will and maybe at that point I'll think about it again though I, if I did I would guess I'd probably take not a whole lot of poems from that book just because it's I've moved I mean I don't know I, like it's it, I already feel distant from the poems in my second book <laughs> and like it hasn't come out yet but I just I'm not working on them anymore I am working on other things like writing. I mean, I, you, you know, this, like as a writer, you always have mistresses. Like you always have the new thing that you're like, Oh, but I really want to get into that one. Yeah. So you kind it's like you, things get old to you and move mm -hmm. on. And, and like, I'm, I, I'm really happy if some of those poems have connected with other people, but I also think like my connection to them is not all that important. And, finally like what i think about them and what i what i what went into them and you know that's that doesn't matter like if the poems have any life at all it's because they live for other people who read them and then they kind of belong to them exactly. like they're not mine anymore exactly exactly <clears throat> i i agree 100 percent on that um, i'm amazed <laughs> no dude, I mean, like, yeah. when i when i write something as soon as i'm done with it it's dead it's like fucking, it's dead to me and then it goes out and if it reincarnates with somebody else who's reading it, then that's their poem now. And like, yeah. that's their fucking thing. So like, I totally, I totally get that about your show. Like <laughs> I was yeah. going back through and I realized that there's probably only like five or six episodes that drive me absolutely fucking crazy. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. everything else I'm pretty solid with. You know <laughs> okay. what I'm saying? Like, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want it to come off. Like I'm like, no um no no yeah i mean but I, like so many people who listen to it regularly hate listen or listen at least with like strong disagreements so i'm i welcome that well it's just it's funny because i was telling you this a lot of times when people come in to your show and they have some theory about something or some idea yeah. about something you don't sit there and just go yes okay you're like well what about and like you yeah, yeah. you kind of like you don't fuck with them but it's like you offer you you try to offer like different points of view on shit, and yeah. that's so nice in this world because whenever yeah, yeah, yeah. anyone listens to anything in this landscape it just seems like like someone's fucking wagging a finger at you so and yeah, I'm gonna, or, or people or they're just fucking singing kumbaya like they're just like well you're great and i'm great and oh isn't she great oh yeah she's great oh and that that's also great and like fine well, like, shit, what let's we, talk yeah. this okay yeah, you, yeah, said, yeah. you said that when you started your show sleep rickets that you started it with the hopes that you could get the conversations that you hear poets have off mic kind of thing yep. like when poets are just talking how has that gone for you like if you did a percentage, how many of those conversations do you think fit with what you initially envisioned the podcast doing? I didn't envision in that much detail. I thought I would do 10 to 12 episodes solo and then call it a day. So I didn't, I just okay. didn't think anybody would play ball. So that some people have has been surprising. Um, it's still not, I, you know, and I, I try to be clear about this on the show as well. Like. This is by no means like unfiltered or with absolute honest, like, you know, we're human beings, like the things we're going to talk about and not talk about. But I think the hope is that it has been a little more frank than poets tend to be when talking about poetry and the poetry world in public. Yes. Because behind closed doors, they're super catty, uh, mm. which is fun, which is great, which I enjoy. And I like I wish people talk that way about fucking any subject under the, under the sun, but they're so they, they're just so delicate and so nervous when it comes to poetry. Um, partly because I think it's just such a small world in which relationships matter a lot and quality matters not at all. <laughs> um, and then partly it's also this weird belief that like poetry's in trouble, 
and like we have to be careful and we we can't let it we can't let the light snuff out we have to keep it alive and think like poetry's fine poetry's fine like it's not like our babying it is not going to keep it going stronger. Yeah. like fucking there was a great light actually i was rereading um because i had to introduce david yezzy and i reread he had this um uh this uh great essay called poetry and truth and it starts with an excerpt from lord byron's diary um or no lord byron has an introduction to some book he was, I think it was Don Juan, and he he writes this anecdote about Ben Jonson and John Sylvester, um, who are Elizabethan poets, and he uh, in the story because poets back then were would like challenge each other the way that rappers will challenge each other today, and so Sylvester said like I'm I wanna I'm gonna um, I wanna challenge you to a rhyming contest, so he said I John Sylvester lay with your sister, and he's like all right what you got, and Ben Jonson said. I, Ben Johnson, lay with your wife. And John Sylvester said, that is not rhyme. And Ben Johnson said, no, but it is true. <laughs> so I think, like, I was like, poetry is, like, people have not always treated it so carefully in the past, and I, I don't think we need to now. No, 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 that's it. That's all you get. That's all you fucking get until Saturday. So, again... Go out and get Last Chance, my chapbook of Last Chance gas stations. Available now at my Etsy shop. Check out my Amazon shop. Look at all my books I have on there. Check out Horrywood on Kindle Vela. Support me on Patreon. Run over to my YouTube and hit uh, join to join the Anarchy Crew. And dude, just give me fucking five stars, you motherfucker. You know you want to. I want you to. So let's do it. I'm supposed to start a live stream 30 seconds ago, and I'm still sitting here talking to you. So we will have more bucks in just a little bit. Go over and subscribe to Slee Ricketts, too, because that's an amazing fucking podcast. And until next time, I don't know, eat shit or something. Type hard, guys. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.